the Morsik edition as Bomet has been host to NTV. And we thank you, uh, Bona Governor, Dr. Hilary Barchok, for hosting us the last three days. And just to start uh, on this note, how would you describe your last or first four months and uh, seven days in office? Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, uh, the late Dr. Joyce Barboso, who dreamed and mobilize all of us to believe in our dream that we can transform Bomed to make Bomed a better place to live in. Um, she did that and all of us poured into our vision and Bomed is what it is today because of what this lady stood for. Personally, I am what I am because of this great lady and I will forever be indebted to her. And we'll get to more of <clears throat> perhaps what she wished of you to continue uh, as her wishes and... Thank you, Mike. Um, I must say, um, the first four months in the office, of course I came in through a number of challenges. You know, the reason why I'm seated on this seat is because of the loss of our late governor, Dr. Chase Laboso. And um, the loss came at a time when we are facing a number of challenges. The man between July and October, in most cases, in the government is attracted by the dispute between the National Assembly and the Senate mm -hmm. over the sharing of revenues and disbursement of those revenues to our counties. Mm -hmm. And um, secondly, of course, as a requirement by the law, the Constitution, when uh, a governor resigns or dies in office, um, the existing uh, cabinet stand dissolves. So when this happened, of course, there were a number of issues that came that were serving under the late governor, Dr. Joyce Laboso. But actually that was a requirement by the law. So um, the, another issue that arose, of course, is the feeling of the position of the deputy governor, uh, governor mm -hmm. that um, there were a lot of debates and uh, talks here and there that you should fill this position with so and so. It should be a female, others saying it should be a choice of my own and so forth. So there are a number of things and the uh, restructuring of the government because I've done a number of changes, particularly affecting the chief officers. That in a bit, but first, and you've mentioned <coughs> rightly so, paying respects to uh, the late Dr. Joyce Laboso, uh, the former governor. and. She must have given you one or two things that she wanted you to carry forward as you took the leadership baton. Share with us what those were. Thank you so much. Uh, we campaigned with the late governor, and our vision is still my vision. What we had promised and pledged for the people of Bomed will be delivered, though she has rested, and my, may our soul rest in peace. Um, <coughs> of course, she was a, a woman, are contributing within our families and our community. In our manifesto, we had seven pillars. And when we went round in 2017, there was this thorny issue about water. Women in our communities, uh, kind of, I may, I may use that word, beast mm -hmm. of pardon, in terms of transporting water, fuel, from the forest or whichever place where they are collecting firewood. So she had made a pledge to the women folk that we deliver on the promise of giving water to our people. Of course, it is a constitutional requirement. So we are partnering with a number of institutions, one of which is Red Cross, who has been partnering with us. They have invested a lot of money. We have been fundraising together to have money to make sure that we have piped water, at least within the reach of our homes. So at least water. And yes. uh, something else that, and you've mentioned it, some wished that you would perhaps have uh, picked, uh, I believe. Yes. Uh, could you give an explanation to those who are hoping for that? Thank you. I know a number of uh, people might have been disappointed uh, because of my choice. But I will always say that um, the reason why I chose Shatwa Klotich, who is a man, to deputize me, is because of the big picture that I saw. One, we don't have the luxury of time. 
I wanted somebody whom I will just plug in and continue with the momentum that we currently have, or even with him. He has been supporting us. He is used to the system. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the advantage that he has. Secondly, mm, choosing your deputy is like choosing your married partner. You do it wrong, and forever uh, you will be in problems. You will regret forever. Shadrach, somebody that I've known for the last two years, I've known his character. What I can say, the chemistry between me and him, I think we have a good working relationship. The time that it's taken for you to uh, select a deputy governor, uh, could it be informed by infighting, uh, perhaps, because we see what the debate is on the Nairobi County leadership right now, and you've actually participated in this conversation in appealing to the president to uh, give the way forward in terms of uh, vacuum when there's no deputy. What took so long? Of course, um, we don't want to disadvantage our people in Nairobi or expose our people to unnecessary anxiety. It's a requirement and we must feel this position. So, but we must also feel it right, not just feeling, feeling it right, so that we have somebody who can serve and uh, deliver for the people, mm -hmm. and in this case, the people permit. Okay, besides the deputy governor position, there is your cabinet. And uh, describe what you have right now in terms of the formation of your uh, cabinet. Uh, there are some of your CECMs who are holding several um, we are in the process of filling our cabinet positions and um, we are shopping for the right people. I've just said, yes, we have vacant positions, but we cannot just fill with anybody. We made a commitment to the people of Ahmed that we serve them. And service comes from the right people, people who are willing to serve, people who are demonstrated that they can be trusted. So we are handling for the right people from uh, the different wards, of course, we want to ensure that all the wards in, uh, in, the, in the county are the right people, people who can be trusted, people who can deliver on the manifesto that we sold in 2017. But there's the issue of quorum in terms of the operations for your county, and when you say you'll take time in selecting your cabinet, um, is there going to be an issue of whether or not you can push operations ahead? How many do you have vacant? At the moment, we don't have any quorum issue. At first, uh, when we started, of course, when I submitted the names to be fettered by the assembly, so three cleared plus one that was pending, that made four. Mm -hmm. We took uh, um, a step to collapse the department that we were having from 10 to 7. So having four, meaning we could transact our cabinet business. Now that we have uh, six CECs in place, mm -hmm. we have expanded our departments to the original 10, and the quorum is 50%. Uh, so meaning when we have six CECs, we don't have any hitches in terms of transacting. Is there any time? What good news for you as uh, the governor? The National Ethics and Corruption Survey 2018 said Bomet County uh, stood at 8.7% for the third year running, recording the latest, the, the least number, beg your pardon, of respondents paying bribes. Uh, how did you feel when you heard this? Of course we felt good, Masai, but um, unfortunately, at the time that it was being one of the mid houses, it was indicated that 100% bribery in Pomed for mm. you to access services, which was not true. It was only on one aspect where the respondent had been asked to indicate the reasons why they are giving out bribes. So meaning out of the 8.7%, they failed in, what categor in one category in terms of the reasons why they are giving mm -hmm. bribes. Okay. But personally, as a leader, because that is one of the four commitments that we made to the people permit. In fact, when you go back to our <coughs> manifesto, the fourth commitment that we made to the people permit was to eradicate uh, corruption. Eight out of 100 people seeking services in our offices gives pride. The second one had 40 point something percent, Nandi. meaning Nandi, that yeah. was Nandi. 
meaning 40 people out of 100 seeking services in their offices are actually giving bribes. Okay. The if national it, if, leverage is 66%. Yeah. And, and, and I have to put this uh, to your table because if you're talking about eradicating uh, yeah. corruption at every stage, uh, there is a question that has also been in various media houses. A fortnight ago, you were before the Senate's County Public Accounts and Investment Committee to respond to audit queries uh, from the auditor general, former Auditor General for the 2017. Out there were uh, quite mind-boggling. 750,000 uh, shillings for executive desk, uh, 400,000 shillings for your bookshelf, 398,000 shillings for conference table in your office, 293,000 uh, for the credenza, 110,000 for your chair. Can you put the right position on this? Thank you so much, Masai. And I want to start by saying um, governments are perpetual. So this issue that was raised by the Senate was actually for the year 2016 actually supplied uh, in April 2017. They were delivered. So we found them in the office. But what this regime, this government did was the payment because all the documentations were proper. So, but the I, procurement was proper? Uh, that's why I'm saying I want to answer that. I'm saying all the documentation were proper. Mm -hmm. So whether the correct procedures were followed, this is what I want to liars with the relevant institutions, including ESCC, to find out whether the people have made court value for their money. Would you, or initiative would you give them with what is in your office? Perhaps someone would say uh, even sell that particular furniture to even equip a school um, in your, within your county just to buy some assurance and trust from your people, 875,000 of your um, county residents and members, that you are out for their good. If you believe that indeed they didn't get their value with this type of uh, purchases. Um, I've said I'm not comfortable, but that doesn't mean I'm sitting pretty comfortable because of that issue. As we are speaking, as I, we have special audit that is going on. We wrote to the controller, I mean, the, the auditor general to give us audit asking. We have special audit that is ongoing. And uh, very soon we'll be having the report and um, necessary recommendation if it means going to ACC or um, uh, taking some of these cases to court and so forth, it will depend on what will come out of this special audit. So yes. we have special audit and maybe we wait for that. Yeah. Once they give us the recommendation, we'll go by that because but, that will be binding. But you do raise questions about this procurement that was under someone else's regime? Of course, it is worrying when you talk of uh, 700 for a desk. Okay, just... Uh, indicated that we made a commitment to the people of Pomet. One was to give them reasonable economic um, uh, opportunities and uh, that is what we want to do. We had promised them that um, give us a chance. And by the year 2022, our lives will be better. And that is what I'm committed to do in terms of uh, seeing that um, the, we develop the four value chains that we have um, actually identified in agriculture, mm -hmm. because that is uh, one area. You've seen, you've traveled, uh, transfers, we are developing bananas, sweet potatoes, we have dairy, and um, the other one is chicken. All right. So those are the four areas that yes. we want to emphasize okay. to improve the living standards of our people. Dr. Hilary Barchok, sorry to cut it at this point, but we're out of time. All the best in your formation of the cabinet and in leading this uh, county forward, uh, of course, with the hopes of the late Dr. L uh, Laboso. Uh, of course, she's, she would be watching from above that okay. you would do the right thing for the people of Bomet and lead as an example for the rest of the country.